I'm kind of nervous because I'm I have a confession to I'm not actually a developer. <laughs> So my topic today is um, why UX, why um, it should matter to developers. I actually uh, struggle with this problem at work uh, quite a bit uh, when I talk to people on the tech team. Uh, one, one programmer even told me the other day, well, there are no rules in design. <laughs> Imagine if I said the same thing to him. There are no rules in programming. Yeah, so I'm just uh, going to share a bit about UX and hopefully sort of convince um, you guys of the importance of it. Okay, so, um, yeah, so user experience, uh, UX is actually short for user experiences and they're taking place around us every day. Uh, we interact constantly with products, both digital and physical, so it um, doesn't mean that it has to be a tangible thing also be tangible. And while we use these things, we're actually attempting to uh, accomplish uh, a goal. Um, you know. And uh, this attempt to accomplish a goal leads to us having a user experience. And it can be a bad one. Yeah. So, uh, this is what the design VP of um, Airbnb said, engineers create things and bring concepts to life. I think the same thing is true for developers. Um, developers also create things and bring concepts <coughs> to life. And uh, so when you're developing your product, uh, it could be an app or a site, uh, user experience is usually a part of the design process that you don't hear about unless something goes wrong. But uh, it's actually something that should be an in integral part of the design process right from the very start and all the way until you've got your final product. So, yeah. What is UX actually? So, it's actually how a person would feel when they're interacting with your product. Um, this is uh, quite a, a reputable uh, guy uh, on design. He, he, he has authored um, several books on about design. And, uh, so UX actually encompasses a lot of factors and some of them are controllable uh, by designers or developers and some are just uh, due to the environment that the product is being used in or some is just like what the user prefers. And um, these factors can include uh, usability, accessibility, performance, design, or aesthetics, utility, ergonomics, overall human interaction, and marketing. So, just a short word on usability. A lot of people think that uh, UX and usability are interchangeable. They're the same thing, but uh, usability is a key component of overall user experience, but it isn't the same thing. Yeah. Uh, UX, uh, sorry, usability is more about how um, your site or app is effective in its design, how user-friendly it is, and um, it contributes to the user experience, but it doesn't automatically result in a good user experience. And uh, while well, UX is uh, the experience, emotion, intuition, and connection a user feels when he's using your site, app, or product. So if you think about um, an object or a possession that you have that's like one of your favorites or it, uh, does it have to be necessarily you know branded or expensive or you know, we, we treasure things for the for the meaning that they bring to our lives um, it, it becomes kind of like a symbol of uh, some happy memory or something or, or expression <coughs> of yourself and uh, more, more often than not, it always has a story or some kind of memory attached to it. So we're often not aware of uh, how strong the emotional comp comp component of our product is. Um, so yeah, so beyond design, there's also the, this personal component that, that no designer or developer can provide. So, um, so Donald Norman, the guy that I quoted earlier, 
(uh) he actually said that one side effect of today's (um) technologically advanced world is that it's not uncommon to hate the things that we interact with ya like (uh) this app doesn't work and 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 you get really worked up and you start to hate it ya so it doesn't matter what your site or app looks like if people don't know how to use it and even if they know how to use it it might not necessarily be enjoyable to use so not only do people need to know how to interact with it they also need to (um) enjoy the interaction and (uh) obviously I believe that (um) user experience is important for any product but I think for developers (uh) it's even more important (uh) in defining the success for certain kinds of digital products Um, these are some of the kinds of uh, projects that um, I think UX would be particularly important Uh, when your when your product involves a very complex site or application or when you're trying to do retail or online sales or if you know if your project is working on a very very small budget or if your app is supposed to last for a very long time um, yeah so in the first scenario uh, when you have a very uh, complex site or app and, and your UX is uh, very sloppy <coughs> then people will never ever come back they'll, they'll try it once and then well it's, this sucks and then they'll never come back ever again so if you have a in, uh, if you provide users with a interaction rich experience it will drive them back to visit your site or app over and over again so just a fun fact <laughs> uh, 40% of users abandon a site if it takes longer than 3 seconds to load so if your site loads in um, 3 seconds or less, congratulations, you passed the first hurdle. And here's the next one. <coughs> yeah. This uh, is convincing users to stay on, on your site. So if you look at the chart, uh, you can see that the first 10 seconds of a user's visit is uh, the most critical. That's when they decide whether they will stay or leave. And um, I think that the probability of leaving is quite high during these 10 seconds um, probably because uh, by now users are quite skeptical about web pages and um, how they're designed there's a lot of very poor poorly designed web pages out there so um, they probably think that it's going to be just another useless website and they're going to behave accordingly to avoid wasting more time than necessary so if your web page, if your website survives this um, 10 second judgment, uh, they might stay and look around a bit. So uh, roughly speaking, there are two cases here. Uh, bad design, badly designed web pages, which will get a chop in a few seconds, and good pages, which might be allocated um, a few minutes. And uh, good or bad is a decision that the user makes within those first few seconds of arriving. So what the implications are. So this is how much time you have to convince the user to stay. You have to clearly communicate your value proposition within these 10 seconds. So here's an example. I think it's a good UX. Um, This is the website for City, but I don't know how many of you know what city members okay so basically it's a um, a site that helps you to uh, get to a destination it's not exactly like Google Maps because it's meant more for public transport um, if you have the app it, it, uh, it's got a really cute oh, I don't have a screenshot of it but it's got a really cute um, uh, little infographic at the bottom and it tells you um, if you map from let's say from a start to the to your destination, uh, it will map for you the various uh, routes that you can take, and then it also tell you if you walk, how many plates of nasi lemak um, you would be burning off, like the calories <coughs> you would be burning off. So um, that kind of brings a smile to your face, and it's the kind of experience that that would drive users back to using your product over and over again. Yeah. And <coughs> So scenario two, 
(uh) for e-commerce online (um) sales and retail (uh) there are several techniques or best practices in (um) U_X that can actually help out (uh) with organising and displaying the content that you need to show users in a clear and efficient way and also I think that (um) secu~ the convincing users of the security of your purchases is quite important cause your trust is an emotional response and (um) customer loyalty is also another emotional response and (uh) more fun facts (um) this is actually the speed at which your brain processes an image that you see thirteen milliseconds and this is how much faster your brain processes images over text so if you were to do an e-commerce site this is what I think good U_X would be (um) use images rather than text to (uh) (um) explain what your product is that you're selling and (uh) I think Apple has gone beyond this and and done a three hundred sixty degree view of (um) the products that they're selling so yup okay then scenario three (um) when you have a very small budget project so as we saw earlier on previous slides so the only opportunity you have with budget constraints is that three seconds or ten seconds you've got to reel a user in so good UX actually oh sorry good UX actually helps you to maximize that opportunity that you've got that three or ten seconds you've got Uh, you don't really want to deliver a poor user experience and then have users associating negative emotional responses with your product okay so next is when should you UX? Uh, a lot of people think UX is a nice to have, something they would add in later after they their product is you know finished and is doing well. But on the contrary, good UX is what will help you to avoid design debt. And what do I mean by design debt? Um, technology moves at quite an incredible pace, and tech companies are expected to move at um, the same speed, right? But building software is complex. I'm sure that's an understatement there. Speaking to a group of developers here. <laughs> so I didn't mention scenario four earlier when your product is when your project is in for the long haul. So without human centered design as a foundation for your project, as your company and its products and services and apps and everything start to grow and age, you're gonna begin to feel the debt that you're acquiring. And I don't mean financial debt, I mean technical and um, design debt. Something like this. And this is what happens when you build for the short term. So I'd say that the interest you accrue is the amount of time that you take afterwards to manage, repair, rewrite, and build again. Um, I don't know the poorly written or designed or both code and other other elements of your product. So I think that the, the impact on usability and performance uh, of such decisions would be exponential. So. I hope I've convinced you that UX has to be a fundamental part of the design process from the very start. It can't, it can't be tacked on or adopted once your product is completed. Okay. So, next is how to UX. Right. So, UX um, acts as a framework for making decisions and is a pretty good way, I think, of reducing the risk through uh, collecting evidence. And it does this through an uh, iterative design process. Um, it begins with understanding users' needs. Ideally, you would derive this by conducting um, studies of relevant <coughs> behavior in uh, the environment or location wherever your product is going to be used. So, for example, if you're designing uh, an educational app, let's say, to be used uh, in a classroom, then ideally you would um, bring your <coughs> you would. I don't know, send researchers or go down yourself to, to a classroom, to a school and, and study how users, uh, students and teachers behave in a classroom. Then um, you would produce a rapid prototype. Uh, usually people do this by um, just simply sketching out their ideas uh, or doing you know, mock-ups of paper and then after that testing it on your prospective users. So going back into the classroom and then asking the teacher and the students to try out your paper or prototype. And uh, you, you do this several times, 
more and more tests and then you know make changes always on paper the fastest uh, way and then soon you have a more complete prototype but but then you can start to do uh, more high fidelity things you know, and maybe even have a working uh, mock-up so by the time your product is finished it will have gone through countless vetting by actual users people who are going to actually use your product so yeah these are some of the ways uh, that you would gather evidence. Basically, um, any opportunity you would get to receive feedback on the overall direction from people in your target audience, it, it's important that you um, test on relevant people. So after you've got all the evidence and all this stuff, um, what should you do with it? So these are some of the questions that you need to do to ask yourself when you're looking at the data you've collected. And don't just um, make changes, uh, don't just do what people say that they need. You have to look at the actual data they've collected and identify the common trends in them. Uh, check check this uh, early, as early as possible so that you don't get too far off track. Um, and think about also what the user experience is about your brand. Um, is it conveying some kind of uh, consistent message? And how does it compare to your competitors? So after you've got answers to all these questions, then you can go back to your design and work on it on a revision. Um, yeah. And uh, while um, user feedback is important, but it's not always, you know, Take it with a pinch of salt and, and always look at the common trends, not just a single user's feedback because people are always experts at their own problems but not at the solution. Yeah. And some people might ask, that sounds like quite a hassle, is it really necessary? So I like to show you these um, packaging designs of ketchup. They look like pretty cool modern hipster designs, don't they? In fact, I would probably buy that if I saw it in the supermarket. Yeah, but did you know that this is actually a better design? Do you know why? <laughs> okay, so I will answer the question for you first. Is all that evidence really necessary? Yes, it is. Because even the best designers and developers need evidence. And UX is about meeting your users' needs. Uh, that there might be needs that they didn't even know they had. So, yeah. UX without evidence is just UI. So as you can see, this design is better because you, can, um, you don't have to turn the bottle around to get the ketchup out. So another way of explaining simply what UX is um, in comparison to UI. So the process is a big deal when you're designing and developing for a good user experience. When you gather um, data and evidence, all these discoveries will help you to define the right thing to make uh, or develop. And then as you develop, it's about exploring the possibilities and defining your constraints of delivery, how to um, Sorry, I dropped the hint there. How to uh, yeah, making and developing the right. It's about defining the constraints of the uh, of delivery, how to make and develop the thing right. So you've gone from developing the right thing to developing the thing right. If you look at this um, Venn diagram, I think these are all the um, constraints that you have to think about when you're de designing and developing uh, a product. So the middle part, the experience innovation, is really the sweet spot where you want to hit. Okay. Yeah. And here are some resources I thought would be helpful. Um, here are some books that I think that they, they would be quite useful if you want to try your hand at UX. Um, 
And also the design, the last one on the list is uh, by Donald Norman. He's um, the uh, guy that I quoted several times. And, uh, it's on websites. And yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, the um, case study on overhauling the mobile Twitter site is quite interesting. That's it, too. And this is me. Thank you, Milly. Uh, any questions for Milly? Uh, I, I have one. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if it's relevant. Uh, you, you mentioned that, uh, let's say, uh, the time it takes for a user to decide whether to leave or stay on the website. Yeah. Just, let's say, uh, few seconds. Yeah. Seconds, right? So, uh, let's say, I think, for example, one of the common e-com, one of the popular e-commerce websites, uh, Q10, I'm, I'm sure most of us know about. Uh, uh, to me personally, I'm not, I'm not sure about you guys, but to me personally, I find the UI, let's say the stuff you want to be very messy. But, however, that being the case, um, yet still, a lot of users still continue staying on the website to do what they're supposed to do. So, does that conflict with what user experience, uh, I mean, uh, is, is trying to sort of reach about? Or? Because, after all these years, they have never touched their Design. So probably they, from the start, they didn't they really care about uh, user experience. So, so, so what you mean is that is is the UI is not that usable. Uh, that as in not uh, as appealing as some of the more modern uh, uh, sites like uh, e-commerce sites like Amazon <coughs> or, 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 or so and so forth. Yeah. So. Is that a fringe case? Mm, I I think that uh, UI doesn't make up all of the user experience. It's it's only a part of it. Uh, if I can go back to my slide, uh, really far back. Yeah. So this, these are all the factors that uh, U UX encompasses. So they all together, they make up the user experience. They so all contribute to, so to the US user experience. So. Um, Okay, maybe the design and aesthetics of Q10 is bad, but they've done huge marketing, I know. And you know, um, it's very accessible. They have so many apps, right? I, I don't know which one is for which. Uh, and it's usable, I guess. It serves its purpose. So, so does, uh, does it, so, so does, uh, my, my, my part question would be, uh, so does user experience impact like um, users initial judgment of whatever they do, but does it take that into account? Let's say the uh, uh, sorry, the initial impression. Is That's right. That, uh, does does it take into account the initial user impression or whatever they are designing for user experience? Um, I'm not really sure what you're asking, but uh, if you're asking, if, I mean, I do think that design and aesthetics is important. That is a factor in when users decide whether to stay or leave. Yeah, oh. it is a factor. Communication, good communication of your idea is a, is a factor. <laughs> so you don't actually have to build a pretty site to be successful, yes? Uh, yeah, this is my main question. Yeah. Does it have to be pretty in order for mankind yeah. to be or does it just have to serve its purpose? Right. It it looks uh, factor, uh, actually on one thing is the balance between the looks and the use, the ease. Yeah, communicating your value proposition doesn't always need to mean that you need you need it to look great. It can look great like the you know the catch up packaging, but does it serve a need? Yeah. Because to 
even get feedback from people you need to actually have something to show them right so which means that you've already started a new project doesn't it would that, be, would that be like an initial phase that like think of the design of the world because don't you have to like define the game world uh, I, I think you can't just imagine in your head when, when you're doing UX. UX is about going out and getting real world data to validate your idea. Yeah. So you can't just run with your idea and then test it. I think you need to go do some research first and then have some data and then you know, look, look at the trends, identify what certain points that you want to work on. I think there's a strategy to prototype the page, the look, and then you show it to the user. And that's what, that's what I'm saying, so you prototype, but how, how far do you do because, because you keep repeating that process. Well, uh, you, you have to set a time box for this. Yeah, it depends on what, you know, yeah, what your project is. I don't, I don't know what your project is, I'm kind of Yeah. You should but if you have time constraints, like what he mentioned, then yeah, certainly that will be a factor. Uh, first shorter time box, given like maybe the business the frequency of business changes is high and you prefer like one to two weeks. There are, there are various strategies to help you uh, speed up the process. Um, there are, there's, there's this thing called Innovation Studio, uh, Design Studio, you can, you can just sit people in a circle and all of you come up with ideas in very short iterations. Uh, this, is the, this is the thing we're trying to solve. Come up with your best thinking about what, how this needs to be. Then everyone just share back and then you do another round of it, incorporating ideas from each other or even enhancing your ideas from the feedback from everyone. So you can do all those processes, all those things you can do to help you improve, uh, think about the, the solution on paper before you even start writing something. But of course once you write something and build something, then you, that's the second round of um, feedback you need to get, right? So it, it starts from low fidelity stuff. And, and then you move, move higher in terms of fidelity, in terms of uh, high, high resolution uh, screen shots to uh, actual working uh, 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 mockups and actual working code, right? So this you can take small iterations. The, the, more, the more you front load this uh, design, uh, it makes you, it, it kind of like reduces the risk in building the wrong thing, but there's no guarantee, right? So yeah. that's your question. Yeah, yeah. So well, because uh, just now when I was listening to the presentation, so you mentioned about your abilities. So I'm like thinking, well, if you carry a iterative project as a whole development cycle, as an idea, then it's you handle both sides of the project. So it's not like you do your front end first. So I think I understood it. Yeah. It was usual. Most uh, uh, projects I was involved with, uh, which where, where it involves a, a lot of fairly intensive UX uh, uh, thing, the research keeps going on, right? While we as a developer, we write stuff that we try to work around the, the, the problem, or rather we work the best that we can based on our own. Uh, uh, so we build rather low fidelity, uh, 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 like a login page. A login page, for example, you know a login page requires this and that. The email address and password, like for example. So you, you just work on low fidelity, plain markup, just to make sure it works functionally. As a developer, I make sure it works functionally. But the color, the size of the font, uh, the layout, arrangement, whether it's a horizontal layout or vertical layout or whatever, um, that is something that we could work around with style sheets. And, and basically, you can A-B test the shit out of it. Right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the things are kind of so at which the designers, the UX people, can go out and start showing people screenshots and even ideas and you know, so. There are a couple of uh, um, online mockup sites that help you do online mockups, uh, like Envision, also may you know, check those out. Like, uh, Envision is pretty awesome for like creating uh, work, working uh, mobile mockups, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Seems pretty cool. In, 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 uh, Envision. Yes. I N B I S I O N. Yeah. 
you can take high fidelity mockups, put it in there, and it's a clickable thing. You can just click as it transitions and fade in, fade out, and stuff, which is pretty cool. But yeah. there's one very important element in UX text actually, storytelling. Yeah, <coughs> storytelling. Mm. User stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions for Mindy? Especially if you're around, you can talk to her. <laughs> yeah, get her number. Her, what should the, get her? Sorry, get her contacts and whatnot. You can, you know. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Lindley.